Greetings and welcome back everyone to Kaiser Rank. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And which we have a cup of tea here, but first we gotta talk about the DKAEB stays afloat. Uh, there was a rare spot of good news today in the terrible year of 1936. The DKAEB Railroad in East Africa has reported profits for the third, third quarter. It seems that the Ethiopians and the Middle African government has cooperated to keep the trading link open. Our relationship with Ethiopia seems to be secure and might deepen the alliance eventually. Good news. Costa Rica requests a German garrison now. Rising instability in the USA and the nearby regimes in Central America forced a small nation to come to us for aid, reminding us of the strong ties between our two nations and the significant German population living in their territory. They're asking that we station a small regiment in San Jose to deter foreign threats. While this is a short-term implications on our relations with the USA, we're sure that we'll, they will understand that we're acting for the good of good. Joseph Beck calls for a referendum on Malkorf Gazettes. <coughs> the Chamber of Deputies of Luxembourg have passed uh, the infamous Malkorf Gazettes with a majority vote. However, this is not the end of the story. Uh, enormous protests took to the streets in the small western state demanding Beck's resignation and the ratification of the anti-democratic Mosul law. Criticism on the national level is equally fierce. Numerous parties, including the SPD, LVP, and even the progressive elements of Zentrum, lodged a criticism, especially as neither the Luxembourg government nor the major steel producers have even considered a negotiation with the strikers. Frustrated with the opposition, Beck chose to put an end to this rhetoric once and for all by announcing a referendum on the Malf-Korf uh, Korf Gazettes, believing that it represents the seven majority outside the main working class towns. He expects to win the referendum with a large margin to legitimize is authoritarian move. We'll see his results in three months. So, but right now we're doing inflation weaponry, oh, which is pretty good overall. We just got to get rid of more debts too. So, and then we're gonna do this one too. Slash welfare funding, which we wrote last time as well, which hurt us our stability and whatnot. And there goes Greece, of course. Foundation of the Belgrade Pact, Soviet. Um, right now we're looking okay, and we're looking pretty good. Not good right there though. But we still have a little more than a month. So right now we have 254 seats out of 223 needed. Uh, oh, I guess the coalition. Uh, Black, white, red has uh, got Gulf Party and Zentrum right, which makes sense. But we did get the minority block in the left. We just need the center still. And over here, well, things are still falling apart. Peace summit, foreign policy, political power. We don't believe in that. Oh, what happened to Middle Africa? Oh, well, whatever. We're still doing okay. Still doing a okay for now. Ah, good. Very good. So that makes me feel slightly better. This would be good too. But we also get a card here. And we definitely need a reform, or at least not, maybe not necessarily a reform card, but at least another card in general. Still okay. So. 190%. I mean, that's pretty scary, not gonna lie. Um. Card game controls, add TT. Hey, resource penalty goes down. That's pretty good. So in the cause of Helm Society, I like that too. But is that mandatory? I mean, we're doing pretty darn well as is. Uh, but would that be would we be locked out of that if uh, we can't do this anymore? Uh. Oh, so we might actually get locked out of that if we don't do this. Interesting. Austrian Empire announces support for Bulgaria. On the initiative of Serbia, representative of several countries have convened in Belgrade to discuss the political and military situation on the Balkans. In this 14 long days events, Serbs, Romanians, and Greeks plot to create a so-called new order in the Balkans, even going so far to create a 14-point resolution which declares that only the self-determination of people, according to the ethnic allegiances, may be considered a just path to sovereignty and territorial claim. Later, the Balkans were restless once again, and the resolutions of the Belgrade Congress will surely be used to justify a common war against Bulgaria and ultimately the Austrian Empire. The Austrians have a call for an international arms embargo on the Balkan states to support Bulgaria. Shall we announce our support for the Bulgarians as well? No, we will support them. So, well, not bad. Uh, we still gotta do this though. Raise it by 15. Reduce it by 15. Our consumers' goods, but that's okay with us. Red Brunswick. The tensions and conflict in Germany have finally split open, and a terrifying spark has just been lit in the small industrialized duchy of Brunswick. During an absence by Duke Ernst August and his wife, Princess Victoria Louise of Prussia, bless her heart, for a solemn celebration of the sovereign's birthday, the 
families winter residents of Cumberland Castle in Upper Austria, violence and fighting broke out in the streets of the capital. The small state has been engulfed by the general strike for months, and yet the minister president, Werner Klusenthal, refused to make any concessions to the socialist movement. In spite of these vast historic class tensions and a past attempted revolution in 1918, the government and political system remained conservative, refusing to implement universal suffrage and clutching onto a system of plural voting to contain the growth of social democrats on the far left. Over time, our secret armament of workers' self-defense groups in Brunswick and the defections from small Brunswickian garrison turned the tide in favor of the strikers, and yet another police raid at midnight in November led to a sudden violent response from the workers. The police and garrison were defeated in the street clashes, barricades were erected, and the revolutionaries occupied several built public buildings, including the police headquarters, railway stations, and prisons. Kuchentals, or Kuchentals, uh, government, fled from the duchy, and the leader of the Brunswick KAPD, Ludolf Lindau, has proclaimed the creation of the Socialist Republic of Brunswick off the steps of the Brunswick Palace. My god, has our 1925 begun? Bruh, really? Sweden, uh, oh, look at that, you belong. Petitions to join the Reichspact. With heavy concerns, Sweden has been watching as their Norwegian neighbor has collapsed cynicalism and started openly affiliating with the regimes in Paris and London. With the Swedish government, val while the Swedish government values Sweden's tradition of neutrality, this was too great a threat to ignore an ally petition to stand with us as to go buying vanguard against the Red Menace, and they're with their sewer reserves at their disposal. Heck yeah, join Middle Europa too while you're at it. Oh, the enabling act. Ah, here we go. The next session of the Reichstag was held with horror in the air. The overthrow of a legitimate government of a German state by socialist revolutionaries immediately pressed almost the entire legislature to unite behind the Reichskanzler, Karl von Schleicher, who immediately took advantage of the situation. The first motion discussed in the Reichstag today was, a present, was presented from the government and read out aloud by the Chancellor himself. Uh, setting the extraordinary conditions in the empire and the necessity for a strong national government during the emergency. Schleicher invoked the experience of 1914 and presented the Enabling Act to the Reichstag. The act would suspend the power of parliamentary no confidence for its duration to ensure national stability and grant the Reichskanzler the ability to enact executive decrees at will, with only the counter signature of the Kaiser. The Reichstag assent will still be required for declarations of war and peace, however, and the Reichstag would also hold the ability to revoke the act once the crisis is deemed to be over. Much of the legislature was already convinced that only a stronger government under Schleicher could afford to answer to the current malaise, while the doubters on the left and right were whipped into line by Schleicher's hints that a defeated Enabling Act may mean his resignation, spiraling the empire further into disarray in this critical moment. <clears throat> As I have a few dissenters among the far left and SPD, the Enabling Act passed almost unanimously and marked a new page in the history of the Empire. And so the last block is in place. With this in place, the Reich's Council can pass the decree without Reichstag assent and is immune to any vote to no confidence. Consulting all power within Kurt von Schleicher. Oh, the cabinet Schleicher mechanics are disabled. Oh. So you didn't get three of them there. Well, let's, let's go by first. So we get political power and stability, but I want to see if we can actually, with this next turn, get one of these groups under us. Oh, hello? Well, hello! At least that's good news for us. Happy 1936, Dale. I can't believe it's still 1936 and we're still doing all this. The Marshal holds on. Oh, look at that. Good. <sighs> Weakening Schlecker block. Oh. Over months, the Reichstag has divided itself into several hostile camps, and one that is aligned with the Reichskanzler Schleicher is rapidly dwindling. More and more factions of the legislature have declared their loyalty to the SPD's or the conservatives' no confidence vote, to the point where only the Reichskanzler's guile and the ability to play off both sides has allowed him to remain in power. This cannot, this block cannot last for, however, forever. Schleicher's ability to call upon his contact is dwindling, and the parties that still see him as the best solution for Germany are reconsidering their choices. Uh, it might not be too late for them to hop on the train and secure a government ministry in the next government after all. We must act strategic with our dwindling resources, the Rukhamf. So that actually is very nice for us. Bulgaria requests support, and they will have it. Our ally in the Balkans during the Valkyrie years, the Tsar of Bulgaria, has reached out to us with a diplomatic envoy. Considering the rearmament of the rivals in the region and the Austrian inaction against them, they request financial and military support to aid them in a likely war. During the interbellum period, the Bulgarians drifted away from our sphere, citing lack sh lacking shared interests as well as their frustration with Bulgaria's treatment of the Valkyrie, and yet they returned to us groveling. Should we spare some aid for something for their aid? We are a generous god. You know we are. Oh, and Spain has exploded. Nice. Marines, huh? That'd be nice, but we don't have to do that. Um, foreign policy? I do want to lower our debt. I mean, debt's going to be is a huge issue for us right now. Darn, that sucks. Because with that one, um, I was oh, regime of the Red General. So he's no longer fighting for it. All Central become aligned with that faction. Otherwise, All Central would become unaligned. From the DVLFP split. 
Huh. Whoops. I wanted to do so much, but I just we just don't have we don't have the ability to do everything here. <coughs> I wanted to do a lot of this, but you know. It is what it is. Uh, regime of the Red General would be nice. Political power and stability. The third down Authoritarian Democrat Party will be now called the German National Unity Front. In fact, it's his making of the, all of the German states. Wer Sports Organization. That's nice. The Gewerkschaftsbund. Ooh, more political power. The first year of Kurt von Schlacker's chancellorship has shown us that a strong has necessary to navigate Germany in today's troubles. The Red General provides it. Uh, the Red General provides it. With an enabling act in one hand and a clique of loyalists in another, he will reshape and transform German society, forging a new state which can overcome these adversities. Uh, the degrading economic situation in the German Empire led to the strikes. The street clash was ultimately a revolution attempt, and the industrialized Duchy of Brunswick. Socialist revolutionaries briefly occupied the city and within a wave of terror and fear throughout the Empire. Reichskanzler Kurt von Schlacke used the opportunity to present an enabling act before the Reichstag, a legislation which would allow him to restore order with emergency powers. Fearful of a revolution, the parliamentarians approved the act, even if in the long term it might be a mistake. Stryker is almost unassailable. It's likely that he'll use the opportunity to begin reshaping Germany into a centralized, militarized new state and consolidate the control of his military clique. Is that a good thing to do? I don't know. We'll see. So at this point, uh, I still want to get increased stuff here too, but uh, we're, we're not looking so good right now. So we're going to do negotiate with lenders in the Austrian Empire. Vienna and our empire are without a doubt our largest trading partner in Europe. Having an impact on most badly by the economic crisis as we have, it will be in our mutual interest to sit down and discuss how to restructure any outstanding debts so that trade can continue flowing. Negotiate with lenders in Switzerland. Although a small nation, the Swiss possess substantial reserves of gold and hard currencies from across the globe. In spite of their uh, geopolitical position, they know just as well as we do that if our economy were to fail, a large amount of their capital would become worthless. If it was with this knowledge that we saw sit down with their creditors and allow us to restructure our debts into something more manageable. Negotiate with the lenders in the Netherlands. Owing to their holdings in Asia as well as their advanced port infrastructure, the Dutch remain a wealthy nation which we share a long trade, uh, strong tra trade ties to. With an emphasis in weathering this financial turmoil together and furthering economic cooperation, we shall sit down and discuss neutral terms with the Dutch lenders. What else we got here? So where are we at? 184. I want to get down to at least 180. Uh, negotiate with lenders in the Dominion of Canada. I'll be a remnant of the former British Empire. Canada still possesses a significant financial capital. Much of this wealth hails from wealthy exiles, many of whom had substantial holdings in our economy prior to its crash. Sitting our financiers to Ottawa to hand out new repayment terms could serve as a first step towards following relations. As... Uh, while securing potential cooperation in the future and negotiate with the lenders in Russian state. In the aftermath of Black Monday, the financial dominance we held over Russia has been dramatically weakened. Through the mass scale and foreclosure of bankrupt businesses to the forced nationalization schemes of the VOD, a large number of economic influence was wiped out by overnight. In spite of this, much of Moscow's lament, we still had a significant stake in the economy, at least for the time being. With this in mind, we should act with urgency to recover as much of our assets and capital as we can before it's too late. And also, we have, still have Ostpolitik. And we need a little bit more, and we can do this investments of Poland. Increasing our economic control over Poland will uh, solidify our grip over them and ensure that their future will form policy will serve our business interests very well. Spanish Civil War. Nice. There you go. We can send volunteers. We can send four divisions. Who do we want to send? Infantry? Or infantry? Or infantry? Or infantry? Or, or marines? And, uh, mountaineers? Or tanks? I think I have to send tanks. Actually, what do you have on you guys? Some light tanks. Nice. How many planes can we send? Two wings. I like wings. They're tasty. Close air support and fighters. Excuse me. Uh, Reich Zesektion am Brunswick. Under Article 19 of the Constitution of the German Empire, the Bundesrat is able to grant permissions for a uh, Reich's execution, an intervention against a federal state in the condition that the state has not fulfilled its constitutional duties until today. This power has never been used in the Empire's history. There are several ways on how a state may not fill, fail their duties. Uh, refusing to pay its matricular contributions to the budget or provide the necessary military contingents, introducing, introducing laws that violate the Constitution, or being responsible for activities against the existence of the Empire. The last of them was invoked in the session of the Bundesrat today, where the Council unanimously approved a Reich's execution against uh, Brunswick. 
Normally an execution would take first form of negotiations before military force is considered, but the government dismissed an option from the outset. The Brunswicker Socialists had no desire to end their struggle with mere concessions either. The Socialist Republic was being rapidly reorganized and already established a small militia, preparing for the onslaught and hoping to endure the crackdown until the rest of the empire raised the flag of revolution. Article 19 states that the Kaiser, through his government, executes the Reich's execution. The task falls upon the Reich's Council to organize the troops that will suppress this failed revolution. Order will be reestablished. What is this? Where do we go? Become active in 1937. Oh, we're not even there yet. So, what do we got? Australia, Sweden. Oh. Future of the Polish government, huh? Enact it. At least nine divisions in Hanover. Huh? Well, oh, alright. That'll be it. Ah, counter revolution. Interesting. Rhein Metella. Six light tanks, yes. Oh, we should bounce faster. End of the Brunswick Revolution. What do we got? Armor? Oh, yeah. Give me all that thick armor. If it's not thick, we don't want them. What else we got here? It's so looking good. One day left. 180 is not bad. The end of the Brunswick Revolution. The operation. <clears throat> The extinguished revolutionary events in Brunswick today took place at haste, aiming to snuff out the Brunswick socials before any of the cities or states followed the syndicalist scourge. Mobilized units of the Imperial German Army have crossed the border early in the morning, and though they caught the militias protecting the small duchy unaware, the response was soon organized and clashes broke out across the streets of the capital. However, even highly motivated workers could not resist disciplined soldiers and heavily armored vehicles. Tanks drove through the heavily erected, uh, hastily erected barricades, and the militia units were scattered after swift firefights. In the Brunswick Palace, Chairman Rudolf Lindau and a small cabinet of the Socialist Republic were found, out, found and rounded up. Though when uh, Klusenthal returned to Brunswick, so I was not re appointed as Prime Minister. Instead, after agreement between the Reichskanzler and the Duke Ernst Augustus, a non-partisan state commissar was appointed to manage the restoration of order in the state. Brunswick is now de facto under central control from Berlin. Executions of main leadership of the Brunswick Revolutionary Attempt, including Lindau, took place in the capital's prison soon afterwards. Understandably, the suppression of the Socialist Republic was decried as a bloodthirsty tyr tyranny and socialist press. The red flag would never fly here. Of course not. Why would it? Ah, so 5500. That's not bad. And stagnation is not bad either. So right now we have a labor crisis, or work creation cards would be even more valuable. Work creation, we love it. What is this? Rex Bank. Recovery card. Crap. Well, it's 135 turns. That's not bad. With WIP work in progress. So have a little more political power too. Negotiate the lenders, uh, lenders in Japan. Relations with Japan remain tense, even more so now that black money is weakened or once seemingly unchallengeable grip in East Asia. Regards to this, the Zaibatsu still invested in several ventures and holdings outside of Manchuria in the ensuing years of the Valkyrie. This included industries owned by AOG as well as resources in Indochina and Malaya. For the time being, Tokyo still needs to trade with us, something both sides are painfully aware of. As such, we shall send our diplomats abroad with an un unenviable task of negotiating with Japanese investors for the sake of our own economic preservation. We don't need. I mean, five hundred is not bad. Good. Five hundred is okay. It's just not great, you know. Von Blomberg. Uh, it's best to fight up here since there's not as many hills or mountains and whatnot. Cards. Uh, establish federal income taxes. Establish price controls. I mean, I wish we could do more of all this stuff. 
Oh, the following will bypass it. Okay, that's good. Uh, I guess you know what? At the end of each turn. Economic recovery in Germany will only be fully achieved and benefit all classes if it's done with the support of the German trade union, socialist, liberal, Christian alike. Must invoke trade union leadership and economic reform plans to create talks between the government, business representatives, and trade unions to listen to the concerns of everybody. Alright, we'll see. Can y'all, like, get up here? What are you doing? Negotiate with the lenders in Sweden. The wealthiest of the Scandinavian nations, Sweden is an essential trading partner during the Bell Creek and following years of prosperity for its iron ore and cake, or coke. With ensuing chaos before Black, of Black Monday, many investors on both sides of our nations have been left in a state of uncertainty. A delegation of Stockholm to negotiate new credit limits would be mutually beneficial in ensuring the continued flow of financial capital between the two economies. Absolutely. Exporting arms to Venezuela? We've been approached by an officer from the Venezuelan military looking uh, to buy a modest amount of artillery pieces to refit their troops. While we obviously would have to say goodbye to a part of our arms truck, but we'd be rather look at a contract to stimulate our arms industry. That's fine with me, yeah. Huh? At least Italian democracy survives for now. And Central European Customs Union returns activity. After the beginning of the economic crisis caused by Black Monday, stock market crash, which caused Germany to draw its attention away from the foreign affairs for the past year, the Central European Customs Union, more commonly known as Middle Europa, has returned back to action once again. Summits of the foreign affairs of ministers of the organization are being held, each one with the intention of coordinating the economies of the alliance and facilitating easier flows of goods. Over time, Euro Middle Europe will expand into several official and unofficial fields of activity, and the interests of the member states may take it uh, to aid one another in a field or another. Of course, intellectuals and politicians envision a bit more and uh, dream of the chance to form the organization and create something new. A German economic hegemony? A fulfillment of pan-European dreams? Time will tell. Good. Oh, God. Elections. Score agenda. Control factories. Spend negative one increase the score by plus one. Increase your agenda score by the cost of political power. Oh, God. We we're doing this agenda. Send German armed advisors, industry, and technology members to member states of Middle Europa. That seems pretty good. Financial injection. Industrial advisor seems pretty good. That's cool. A royal scandal, another day, another sensational rumor about the royal family's dark secrets is making the rounds. This time, Crown Prince Wilhelm, one of his many alleged love affairs, stand in the center of attention again. Censorship on the articles openly defamed the Hollandsalderns and thrown their reputations very resolute, and the most mainstream newspapers tried to refrain from publishing such controversial articles in the first place out of respect. With the quick emergence of the less professional tabloid press in recent years, however, some unpleasant information always manages to slip up through the public. Considering the Crown Prince's relatively low popularity, however, barely anyone can be really expected to be shocked by the new headlines, though. Uh, save for the hardline supporters of the monarchy and the right, who have accepted that this will be the future Kaiser. Terrible, they're a general and land bulk. Having survived the great crisis of 1936, the Schleicher cabinet must now turn words into deeds. The agriculture crisis that has plagued Germany since the late 20s <clears throat> has become even worse in the wake of Black Monday, and the DKP State Secretary of Agriculture, Martin Schiel, who's been in the office for several years, has not even been able to deliver sustainable results. A strong advocacy for the complete Autarchy of the German agricultural sector, a continuation of protectionist tariff policies and even stricter import quotas, has alienated Middle Europe proponents, export industry lobbyists, and trade union leaders alike. They fear. F uh, oh God, what the heck are they doing? They are fearful that Shields policies might aggravate with economic, uh, the economic dilemma by destroying wage levels and hampering profitable trade unions or trade with other countries. Thus, she has no future with Sch in Schleicher's government. Who should replace him? For Schleicher, two potential uh, options are on the table. A clean break with the methods of old would be one possibility, in keeping with his controversial queer front strategy. Schleicher could build, try to build a bridge between the left and right. One of his closest confidants is the conservative Saxon civil servant Gunther Gerke, uh, land bund functionary and chairman of the German Rural Municipal Association, a powerful rural interest group. Gerke is an expert on agricultural policy and the social question in the right-wing camp and a proponent of cross-partisan cooperation, which he's used in his role as a lobby 
Group functionary. In cooperation with a high ranking SPD agricultural expert, Fritz Bad, who could be assigned to Agarka as a Undersecretary of State, a completely new and innovative approach to solving the agriculture crisis would be possible. This association, however, might be controversial in the Juncker circles. A young dynamic representative of the old order, like the Rhenish agricultural functionary Hermann von Lunick, uh, well connected both in the local land board and in Catholic farmers' associations and willing to balance the interests of land farmers, or landowners, farmers, and industry, could be a left of a compromise candidate overall. Choose Garrick and Bad for a more thorough approach. Lunik for the West German Compromiser. Uh, Gespan Gerek Bad. Gunter Gerek and Fritz Bad are one of the strangest combinations that Schleicher's cross party Querfant as concept has brought forth. A conservative civil servant from Prussian Saxony, and the SPD aligned agricultural and economic expert with his own state in the province of Hanover, do not seem to share many similarities. In fact, however, the two men have a lot in common. Agricultural expertise of the highest quality and pronounced pragmatism will then achieve the best for Germany during the darkest times, no matter what the party partisan affiliation. Garrick, a close association of Schleicher, has long been a bit of an outsider within the DKP due to his ties to many different political camps. Far-right populist Lambun functionaries from Thuringia are just as much part of the circle of acquaintances as the social democratic economist Rudolf Helfeding. The German Rural Municipal Association that he presided over represents many parties, different trade unions and farm and associations, and therefore seems exemplary, exemplary for underpinning Schleicher's political vision. The same holds true for Bad, the long-time social democratic champion against orthodox Marxist doctrine, thanks in part to his efforts. The SPD reformed their agrarian program from ground up in the late 20s, borrowing heavily from the liberal concepts. Bad is also renowned as an economist, most recently thanks to his controversial plan for solving the economic crisis, co-authored with Fritz Tarnow. Uh, we can count on the Gespan Gerek Bad to strengthen the situation of small holding farmers, in particular to push back the damaging influence of the Junkers, which has fueled the agrarian crisis in recent years. The SPD and the DKP leadership are not 100% enthusiastic about Schleicher's choice, and the Gerek and Bad are facing fierce criticism, but that should settle down soon. Compromises have to be made, this is one of them. Supplant the Landbund. Oh! Lerex Landbund. The Germans. Most powerful agrarian social lobby group claims to be equally represent the interests of the Junkers and the small scale farmers alike, but due to the sheer power of the Junker dominated local associations in East Elbia, the head office in Berlin has always pursued a course that benefits the more, mo most powerful backers. That needs to change. Since the landowners are skeptical of our political course, the small holder element in the organization and the board must be strengthened. Through intrigues, indirect inf interference into local chairman elections, and contact men at the municipal level. Sure, why not? That seems like a good idea. A negotiated letters in the Australasian Confederation. Although Australasia does not trade much with Germany directly by virtue of its location on the other side of the globe, it does with our various colonial holdings in East Asia. Even if relations between our two nations are chilly, there's a lot of wealthy investors that fled there after the fall of the British Empire, it would be unwise for us to overlook them. As a result, telegrams should be sent to Canberra to settle any existing debts. That'd be great. This is still making me nervous, though. Cooperation with business. I'll do it if it can give us more cards. Oh! So, this should be good, right? Direction of the military. It was slightly long ago that Prussia is an army with the state, though Germany has advanced beyond this brutish image somewhat. There's no surprise that the Imperial German Army it is one of the most influential and valid arms of the Empire. The Valkyrie has given it an aura of invincibility, and though it may be true, the army is nonetheless mired by issues that may prove to be its Achilles' heel. A victorious inter-service rivalry, lacking central coordination, and a, a, calcif a calcified aristocratic uh, officer corps are just some of the many problems that worry the OHL and the Prussian Ministry of War. Factions or cliques that form within the army, each with a different vision. The Reformisten are the followers of the ideas of the late Hans von Siegt, and are represented by the current Chief of Staff, Kurt von Hammerstein Eckwald. They envision a centralized, modernized, professional army open to all social strata employing combined arms for mechanized warfare. On the other side of the fence are the Algaristen. The other staff should prefer more streamlining of the existing army structure. Finally, off to the side, they have championed by generals such as Joachim von Stupnagel, which were a nationalistic, ideologized military fit for total war that required the mobilization of the nation from the top down. The entrenchment of the army and politics mean that each of these three factions is powerful allies in the Reichstag, and a preferred government of choice. Now that the dust has settled somewhat, the winners of the political battles in 1936 are free to support their allies in the army and shape the military according to their own vision. What a freaking mess. We are ready. Our chosen political path will determine the direction of the military reform. Schleicher dictatorship will support De Front. Schwarz Weiss Rot Coalition will support the Altgaristen. Democrats Social Union will support the Reformist through decisions, you have to strengthen the grip of your faction by choice, by swaying or promoting commanders friendly to your cause. The stronger the grip, the more national you know, not will become available. 
Also, since we're probably going to have this problem later on anyways, I want uh, refineries, but I do want this too. So, we're not doing so well here in Spain, are we? They're attacking us like crazy. Are they able to pierce us? Yes, they are. It's not good. No, we're doing okay. Not great. Serbians, Fourth Balkan War. Yeah, that's not good. Give some volunteers. How many? Four. Fighters here. You just drive up that way. At least that's good. <sighs> That'd be nice. Oh, now we have the benefits. Some, well, some benefits around here. Military mission to Constantinople. Oh, European Brotherhood. Oh. We're in the track to the Schlager dictatorship. Well, maybe we can't go to Social Democratic then. Oh well. This will be good to do. Regime of the Red General. Hmm. What's this? Reinstate the agrarian uh, uh, command economy. The agrarian crisis can only be overcome via temporary state interventionist measures. Progress and change sometimes have to be imposed from above, no matter how controversial this decision might be. In times of scarcity and hardship, there's no liberal capitalist alternative. The farmer has to be reminded of his obligations to the nation, and our production has to be thoroughly modernized and adapted to the needs of the consumers. For that, we need to be uh, total, but temporary state regulation of the entire agricultural market. Failed revolt in Ukraine. Not bad. Uprising Ukraine crushed. Good news from Kiev has reached us. The Ukrainian ambassador by Germany has informed that our respective ambassador, Johannes von Belchak, that the critical situation in Ukraine has passed, despite initial setbacks. A counteroffensive has pushed the Ukrainian socialist rebels out of the country and forced them to flee, ensuring that Skoropatsky's rule in Ukraine is essentially unchallenged. Well, Hetman has never styled himself as pro-German, preferring to be labeled as pro-Ukrainian instead. There's no doubt that his victory will be beneficial for the German-Ukrainian cooperation, hopefully. We expect to reap the rewards of said cooperation, as well as remain assured that our defensive Oswald plans could continue as before. Good to hear. You go around him. All right, so you're, d you're just done. The supplies here are just so bad. Oh my God. Because you need to get one of these tiles here to do this. If that's the case. I'm gonna have you guys pull out. When in doubt, pull out. You know. Uh, need something like that maybe. I need you to leave. And if the Ottomans attack, they're kind of screwed. But if they don't, it's kind of okay. Okay. Uh, they're probably going to lose that tower, which is going to suck a lot. Um, which front? Huh. <laughs> hmm. They're probably going to lose no matter what. You know, push Romanians back over the river. Probably be for the best. Uh, can you, like, get our correct army general, please? Hello? That would be fantastic. Where are you guys at? Just kind of holding, which is good, still. Fall of Madrid, not good. You know what, screw it, we're going to Madrid then. leave. Regime of the General. We're going to establish the 
a Gewerkschaftsbund, must foster the relationship between the state and the labor through a national trade union confederation. Lota Admet, a trade union loyalist, Loyal, loyal to Schleicher, shall chair this association of all loyal trade unions among the country, shall break apart the unions which do not cooperate. Look at all the political power we have, look at that. Fantastic. Agricultural Settlement Promotion Act. Intended to secure a, a solid funding base for the promotion of a rural settlement in the East, this law will be the first step to break the rural hegemony of the dying Yucca class. The creation of small suburban farm settlements will be the opening move. Later, the liquidation of the unprofitable Juncker estates will follow, which allows to strengthen small mid-sized farmers, encourage settlement, and breed a new generation of proud, efficiently work, uh, working smallholders. If you can't manage your finances, the government should not bail you out. With, win the loyalty of farm and unions. <coughs> Our pact with the United Federation of Christian Trade Unions and the Social Democratic Free Trade Unions is primarily tailored towards improving the conditions of the suffering of the urban population, but why stop there? There are unions for farmhands and forestry workers in the countryside which are affiliated with the main trade unions, but have always played a rather marginal role. If we can create a stable base for negotiations between Jörg Schmidt, Schmidt President of the SPD Aligned German Agricultural Workers Union, and Franz Behrens, who presides over the Conservative Central Association of Forestry, Agriculture, and Vineyard Workers of Germany, we might be to establish Schleicher's Querfront more timely outside the cities. And raw Arbeits, uh, Arbeitsbeschaffung program. What else is there due to large scale job creation schemes as have as much of a merit in the countryside? Roads, railways, new train stations, renovation of public buildings, land development, straining of waterways, everything that benefits the empire's rural infrastructure leads back to the economic recovery. We're going to stuff as much as we possibly can into there. Also, for peace, we don't care about that. Real propaganda? That'd be nice. Uh, I don't mind doing this one too. This is going up anyways. Pro Monarchist campaign. Yes. Weapon manufacturers in Middle Africa. Under the auspices of Karl Ritter and his four year plan, the Middle Africa has made progress in the light industrialization using the great labor force of Africa for the production of civil rifles. Well, these weapons are crude. They are. Uh, and it's certainly not fit for use in German hands. This means that the several shipments of weapons once destined for Africa are no longer needed there. You can never have enough guns. So, how is the air battle raging up here? We're doing okay. Not fantastic, but okay. We're getting back Madrid. Max Bauer, 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 a news article submitted to the Militär Wochenblatt, the magazine of the Hare, which has served as the primary publication of the military since 1816, has made rounds among the readership. It was penned by Max Bauer, an infamous officer in the general staff during the Valkyrie who later rose to the rank of general before his retirement. More famously, he was a protege of Erk Ludendorff and considered his right-hand man. Much of the so-called Ludendorff dictatorship during the Valkyrie was his initi initiative, and near total mobilization of the nation during the last years of the Valkyrie was envisioned by him. As a result, he has become sort of a, a symbol, uh, and respected spiritual leader, or a person to the officers and generals who desire for the hair to transition towards total war. Bauer's art article, drawing from his Valkyrie experience, reflects this. He is highly critical of the government's lack of interest in military matters and predicted that by the next great war in Europe will be even be more total than the last. Such a war can only be won by complete dedication of the state's entire resource based war. Well, hesitation or qualms, there's little illusion that this impl implies a totalitarian military dictatorship. Let him fear monger bluster, we will never lose a war. That's right. Future of the army, oh god. Good. Well, 194 is not good, but whatever. Oh, what is this? Investments of Poland. 55 is pretty decent. Production base. Oh my god, that's pretty good. Mm, division recovery rate. Description loss costs. Possibly not be popular with the German states. Well, we still gotta do some stuff here, too. State monopoly on nitrogen and tobacco. The economist Karl Helfrich has proposed establishing state monopolies on two lucrative consumer industries, nitrate mining and tobacco, which will bring much needed revenue to the budget. This proposal has also found support among the left and far right. But we have to do that one next. Hey, sign off in America. Good job, guys. Well, if you need to spread out that way too, that's fine. You can hear the gather strength until they all like kill themselves. Should be good. Should be very, very good. Um, hmm. Well, at least India's killing itself. That's good. It's fine too. 41 days, not bad. What do we got for theorists? 
what is our land doctrine anyways? We start on nothing. Okay, good to know. I wouldn't mind working on like army XP and stuff like that, or because we need that some of that stuff. Discover the citric acid cycle. A newest publication. Uh, the Chemica Azatung Oba de Vishtigistin Gebita da Kemi an Chemishin Industry. Readers can find an article submitted by Hans Krebs, MD, entitled The Role of Critical Citric Acid and in Intermediate Metabolism in Animal Tissues. In it, Krebs presented his new discovery of a cycle of reactions involving the molecule citric acid that has proven to be essential in functioning of all living organisms. The process involves a series of cyclical chemical conversions and is a vital element of the cellular respiration allowing all organisms to function. The author of the paper, Dr. Hans Krebs, is a researcher at the University of Freiburg, known for his discovery of the orthonine Ornithine Cycle 1932. Using previous work by Albert Emira Sen Gyogi de Nagrapot, who discovered several products and reactions in the cycle, Krebs has presented his discoveries in a succinct fashion. This recent discovery has been seen as a extremely innovative, and Krebs is already receiving further honors and renown in the scientific world. The achievements has also bolstered the reputation of the German scientific circles, and more importantly, the Kaiser Wilhelm Society, the cycle of life. Let them kill themselves. Yeah, they deserve it. Need to shoot them away. Good. And the second Americans have war. Nice. Death charge throws happened in 1837, everybody. The long way to unification of the German trade unions movement. The seemingly impossible has happened. After trials, efforts, and negotiations, the Reichskanzler was able to find and forge the unification of the eternally divided German trade union movement for decades. The rest between the moderate and conservative Christian trade unions, the social democratic free trade unions, and the liberal Heilsch Donka unions were too deep to overcome due to partisan and ideological considerations, but in this new era of unionist self determination heralded under Schleicher, the party's influence on the alleged or aligned trade unions' decision making has started to fade away. An emerging younger generation of constructive, forward looking, forward facing trade unionists, long disenchanted by the old idols and the partisan allies, played a key role in negotiations. With the formation of the Unified Government Alliance and on paper nonpartisan Gewerkschaftsbund, they hope to further expand the domestic political weight of the union interests. The young ex SPD functionary, Olota Admin, a no contact with Schlack, is supposed to chair the new organization, assisted by high ranking representatives of all the old trade unions, like the, like the Catholic Stegewald Protege, Jakob Kaiser, the free trade union leaders, Wilhelm Leuschner, or the liberal unionist Ernst Lehmer. The skepticism of some of the older union cadres could be calmed via the establishment of a prestigious labor covenant in which various old guard trade union leaders are to be appointed for advisory purposes. However, it is apparent that this body is more than symbolic in nature. Thus, for now, the old trade unions have not yet fully dissolved or subordinated themselves to the uh, Gewerkschaftsbund, with some of the old leadership figures frantically clinging to their trench leading positions. The passage of time will also catch up with the rebellious. For the time being, we have no choice but to supplant the remaining rump unions with their loyal men and, if necessary, use determination to persuade the older elites into submission. A glorious day for the German labor movement. So good. Ah, support different groups here. Minor defeat. Oh god. Wait, what do you mean minor defeat? Fine, we'll invest in you some more. <coughs> wow, they're forcing the defense. They're going all out for this. Rhein metal, huh? What do we got here? Oh, how's uh, Bulgaria going? I completely forgot about them, too. Slowly losing here, which is not good, but still. Agitation among the SPD left. Oh, a great peasant uprising in Poland first. A nationwide rave of peasant protests broke down in Poland, and the events have caused some unrest even in the Prussian side of the border, Mazuria, and even the small holders of Posen. The scale of the demonstrations are worrying, and should August the 4th's government fail to contain the rebels, the strike might turn into actual uprising against their interests. Many of the council have asked Berlin to instruct them on how to handle the crisis. Always, always been too soft in the Poles to demand action. Let August handle them. See what happens. Agitation among the SPD. Left. The right have now consolidated their hold of the government of Germany, and the chance of the incumbent cabinet failing or falling due to pressure from the Reichstag appears increasingly narrow. As part of uh, 
As article after article is printed on grand plans that dismantle the already fairly weak parliamentary system in Germany in order to replace it with decades of right-wing dominance, social democrats are now increasingly uneasy. This concern is especially held among the young generation of the SPD who, unlike their predecessors, have a far different image of politics. While well, the party elders entered leadership during the anti-social laws, of the late 19th century, and thus war to always seek the most legal path of power to avoid a second period of repression, the politicians born in the 1890s or later never experienced this, and are thus far more aggressive, and though not necessarily more ideologically radical. While within chapters of the SPD, trade union meetings and social study groups, tense discussions taking place on whether the social democrats should take to the streets to fight for the defense of the democracy, and it seems a large bulk of the party's mass membership are swayed by this rhetoric, leading members of the SPD's youth wing such as Kurt Schumacher and Theodor Halbach, as well as the long-forgotten yet ex existing radical left wing of the party which includes people such as Max Savitz and Kurt Rosenfeld, have been recognized as the leaders of this move. Though the party's central committee has still expects to just wait out a short-lived period of right-wing rule. Nairun believes that the democracy would be simply defend itself. These thoughts are rather treasonous. Costa Rica requests our protection. Horrified by the civil war in America, the small nation looks in fear to its eastern and northern neighbors or borders. Waiting for an attack now that its protector is at war, this request that we open at least express our desire to keep Costa Rica a sovereign state. As Antón forces encroach on the Panama Canal, determined to snatch it from the falling USA and socialist forces toward the north, look eagerly to the ill-defended Costa Rican nation. It would be in our best interest to establish a photo of the American continent and keep a close eye on the region should the situation escalate further. Why not? And also, we did, uh, were able to encircle Madrid. The end of the turn is looking pretty good for us. It's looking very good. And at this point, we might as well end the state of emergency in the Rhineland. I mean, as much as I love getting extra 25% political power, um, we probably need to end it. Yeah. Oh. The reinforced Lithuanian police. The Lithuanian government has, has hands full with the already allegedly. Russian sponsored Lithuanian Activist Front, a terrorist organization responsible for numerous heinous acts. We can dispatch uh, some specialist forces from Russia to counter their insurgency. Oh, that'd be good. We have no command power, though. Picture of the Valkyrie is just destroying us. And also, we have Madrid surrounded, so we're trying to beat them up. Panama Canal Crisis, huh? Hmm. You are aligned with the Front. The, front. the Armed Forces of the German Empire. Though seen by some as unbeatable, are plagued by issues and three factions vie for the supremacy within the officer corps in hopes of imposing their plan for reform to alleviate the problems. Some seek a more radical transformation to the military, abolishing the antiquated structures of the old and forging a modern centralized army from them. Others merely seek to address the worst emergencies and continue with the tradition for Germany's sake so far. Or the tradition that Germany's taken so far. You have access to a plethora of decisions to promote commanders aligned with your faction, and strengthen the hold of your faction in the armed forces. The greater factions reach, the more national posts that you have access to, spending faction grip taking them by taking them, and the more you prepared we will be for the second Valkyrie. Currently you're with the Fronde, current grip of the military is 30%. Huh. That's scary. Alright. Economy recovers! The long period of economic downturn has finally come to an end, and a long series of strategic government policy to alleviate the malaise has finally had their effect, and for the first seven years, Germany has reached pre-1934 industrial production levels. Not only have the effects of the economic crisis uh, sparked by Black Monday have been curtailed, but also the instability that set in the, the markets ever since the election of Boris Savinkov and the Russian Republic. Now that productivity and employment uh, have been restored to stable levels, emergency economic controls can be loosened, and financing for other government programs expanded, the has been itching to initiate major reforms and leader leadership has already begun lobbying members of the Reich to finance ambitious government projects. So negative one, that's fantastic! Long live the unsurpassed empire! Wow! Yay! It's done! Now we can actually focus on the game. Hey, we don't have no, no longer negative stability, too. Oh. Uh, if you want to do this, please go ahead, as well as this one. And this one. Oh, no, we no longer get basketball, of course. God dang it. Hey, we're building very well, though. Come on, we want Madrid, god dang it. We actually get one political power a day. And the state of emergency in the right, then. Once the events of the world calmed down completely, we can end the state of emergency in the region, a sign that the labor struggle has been concluded. We have nothing to fear from the workers any longer. Peace in the Ruhr. The rural general strike is over. Moderate, revisionist factions of the uprising who sought to material gain for the workers have either been appeased or surrendered due to the supreme force from Berlin, while radicals which envisioned the rising as the foundation of a German revolution have been scattered for now. An uneasy peace is set in the Ruhr. Conservative press has already proudly declared victory against syndicalists and anarchist terrorists who sought to overthrow the state and bring forth the reign of terror. The liberal and socialistic uh, counterparts are more reserved. The journals commentating that such incidents are likely to continue unless a comprehensive reform to labor law and social security is passed. Though some agree, others such as the Hugenberg concern and other far-right activists were only radicalized in their opposition to socialism by the events. Well, let's make labor reforms in the future. Fantastic! We got rid of our depression and we no longer have uh, activists trying to kill us as much.
As much, of course. Well, I was going to do that one. We didn't really need that one. Hey, we got Madrid back. Look at that. Oh god, now we're touching the reds. I don't like touching reds. Alright, you can hold. You guys can like push out here then. Wow, you don't leave yourself open there. That's fine if you want to do that, but still. This is a giant freaking mess. The movement of the March 3rd. Uh, a meeting by the coffee table in the Berlin soon escalated into something more. Uh, connections pulling it on connections. And in the end, Kurt Schumacher and Theodore Halbach are joined by members of the LVP such as Hans Rosen Robinson. Robinson. Oh, Robinson. And Ernst Strassmann and Heinrich Landau have established a so-called Club of March 3rd. Named after the date of the problem allegation of the March reforms of the Imperial Constitution refers to the goals with said name alone. The defense of the March reforms against what is perceived as encroaching reactionary rights. A rule. Though the club professes to be a nonviolent organization that seeks to use public pressure and order, and the force of the regime to reconsider its moves, the pu uh, we can we can pierce through the veil and recognize what this movement truly is. The pervasive influence of traitors, perhaps even syndicalists and Russian-funded, runs deep, and it's likely that the club's wide contact with fellow social democrats, liberals, and trade unionists will allow to organize numerous acts of protest through the following years. Perhaps if we escalate or crack down on the social democrats, however, their influence can be broken down in the long term. The resistance is foolish. Periodic events about the resistance of democratic society to your actions will begin. <sighs> can never get out of the woodworks, can we? Please crack down. Get more weekly stability. Uh, I might actually do that. Crisis over Koto. Ever since the independence of Panama from Spain, they've laid claim to the uh, land or region of Koto. Uh, a region of Panama, Cherokee province along the Panamanian Costa Rican border in 1911. The Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, Edward D. Weil, was asked to arbitrate. He rendered his decision in 1914, but Panama did not accept it, alleging that it favored Costa Rica. Hostilities broke out in 1921, when Costa Rica invaded the area. Panama recaptured the area easily. The conflict spread, however, when Costa Rica moved into the province of Bocas del Toro, fearing that its interests might be threatened. The U.S. enforced Panama to accept the white decision. Well aware uh, that the Americans are in no position to save Costa Rica, once more, the Panama government has sent another ultimatum to San Jose, demanding the extradition of Costa Rica. Even though we have little reason to mingle in their small disputes, finding a peaceful resolution of the crisis will affirm our status as excellent negotiators and can force the Central American region back into submission. However, sit down. Reward loyal trade unions. Deport the ringleaders to the commune. I like doing that one, but this is good too. Ooh, more civvies? It will not be popular with the German states. National defense. The aggressive learning leaders of the general strike. Those who are prominent enough to be arrested shall be removed from political life by deporting them to the communards. They will be brought to the Alsatian border and stripped of their citizenship. May they ride Paris in its bland worker blocks. A reward loyal trade unions. We must employ the carrot as well as a stick. The trade unions which refuse to join this general strike and order the members to continue working will be rewarded with state support and additional benefits to its members. This will make the rest of the unionized workforce more interested in dialogue than action. Hey, at least we're pushing this, buffing this out a little bit. My god. It's been nuts here. How is Bulgaria looking too? Oh, actually, what do we got here first? 234, 112. Okay, 55 days. Not bad, not bad, not bad. It's kind of hanging out here right now. Uh, I guess, can you do that there? No? Okay. Panama accepts the follow white ruling. Unwilling to escalate the matter any further and afraid of her military might, the Panama government has agreed to end the dispute and adhere to the follow white ruling. Diplomats from both nations have gathered David to finish an official document, and after the formalities are over, the situation will be finally resolved for good. Costa Rica will retain the Koto region, and Panama will give up all claims in the territory. Another job well done. God, we're doing really well this last half of this episode here. Well, this is the case. Oh my god, what are you doing? Cover your freaking borders, boys. Hungary leaves Middle Europa. Oh crap. Hungary has severed the last of its ties with Middle Europa today. The government has chosen to leave our sphere of influence and side in the exploitative nature of the customs union. Any of the designs we might have had towards the country have been abandoned for the time being. Do not focus your darn it. That's weird to have so green. Oh, good. The High Commissioner has convened the Legation Council for an important administrative matter. Whether or not to allow the International Volunteer Force to begin a limited conscription of assistance of the International Quarter to allow the force to better defend the cities. With the hope of lasting peace in the Far East, growing ever further away, Many Shanghai find it necessary to expand the local protections available to the cities. If a limited conscription is implemented, it's likely that the council will not feel obligated to expand recruitment to ethnic Chinese and move the volunteer force leadership. This is said to greatly oppose, however. The council might also feel to expand the force's manpower, allowing us to stress their own defense more. Or prove it. Crisis on the Danube. Moving there again, that'd be great. Now you're gonna hold. Hey, better light tanks are good. 
1937 stuff. Uh, oh god. I can't believe we actually got rid of all the stuff for uh, small proof can. Would be nice. Um, the economy, Black Monday. I I can't believe we actually did it. I'd like to do that, but there's not much we can really do without enough army XP, you know? And if they want to keep attacking me, that's okay too. I like that as well. Oh. The Fronde. Oh, okay. So, the initiate military reform, the German military is the greatest fighting force on the planet. However, even when we must consider the reform to match the growing strength of our enemies in the West, in the West and East alike. New technology must be integrated into our ranks. New strategies drawn, new military industries established. We initiate the reform of the Army, Navy, and Air Force of the German Empire. Earning for Kane. Oh, that'll be really good to do. For centuries, German military doctrine has been built upon the principles of maneuver, encirclement, and destruction. Later, Battle of Kane has drilled into the heads of War Academy students as per the perfect battle, and we should continue striving for improving upon our principles of maneuver warfare to create an unstoppable doctrine of modern war. A chapter of Wehrmacht. Mass charge, huh? Infantry motorization, huh? A research lot, too. Armor. Max speed. And reliability. Fuel usage goes down. Max speed, reliability. More boogies. I like that. Boogie it on up. God, we have no command power. We need more war support. Fall of Boston. Oh, that's not good for them. I just step out here. Well, passes good for them. Would you look at that? Now help them out. Kill them all. Seriously, just help them all out. You got this. You got this. There you go. <clears throat> 1937 Dutch elections. What else we got around here? Crap. Come on, Bulgaria. You can do better than this. Can you? you should be able to. Oh God. Support ringleaders to the commune. Unit for cam. Yeah, I'll we'll do that one definitely. That's good. Uh, radio propaganda. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind racing down here. So, a second Einkreisung theory. Much like before the Valkyrie, we are becoming surrounded by enemies. That is, of course, the fruit of the villainous plotting of Russians and syndicalists, and not the outcome of mistakes by our foreign policy. However, Force of Arms will correct this development. The second Einkreisung must serve as a wicked call for armed forces in society. Absolutely. How are we doing in Spain? Doing all right? Costa Rica requests assistance. Disaster is otherwise quiet. Has the otherwise quiet little nation of Costa Rica when the ZKG, Zentral Americano Shakafi Gesellschaft, crashed hard on the Berlin Stock Exchange just a few weeks earlier, dragging the nation to a hole out of which it will be unable to recover on its own to save them from the complete collapse. Uh, the small nation requests us alone to bail, bail them out. I'll offer them assistance, that's fine. Yeah. Alright, so with that in mind. We need guns ourselves, huh? There you go. Rising sun. You don't need to go there to do that. Hello, what is this? Wait, what? Hello? A black dossier. A group of anonymous officers and administrators in the middle of Africa have compiled documentation and evidence of illegal activity by Carl, uh, Governor Carl Ritter and presented to the cabinet. The evidence, if proven true, is very serious. According to what the dossier alleges, the governor has been diverting funds from the state budget to buy off key figures in German high society in order to secure support for his administration as well as demanding state officials pay into a slush fund. 
Even more darkly, it alleges that with less evidence, the Carl Ritter and his loyalists gather information from blackmail against his own employees. Has been involved in the kidnapping and intimidation of journalists, and even hiring assassins. Formal investigation was conducted immediately. Uh, implicates a powerful member Berlin. We no, never heard of it. Never heard of it. Don't know what you're talking about. No clue what you're talking about. Follow Denver. Goodbye, Denver. Welcome, Denver. So, you guys are killing yourselves again. Pretty normal. But can we actually beat them up? High tea aligns with us. High tea? Haiti. Huh. Oof. I can't speak, can I? After so much of people, the nation of Haiti appears to be ready to enter the full international arena on her side. The government of Port-au-Prince has released a rapid-fire series of declarations regarding a number of international issues along with their own positions. Haitian diplomats have also sent out feelers conspicuously meant to gauge our willingness to enter into a military alliance with the country. It seems that the country is unlikely to formally broach the subject of alliance on some future day, perhaps tomorrow, or perhaps years from now, but someday. The government of France turned Switzerland. The government of France and its mad quest of powers demanded the province of Haute Savoy from Switzerland. This latest diplomatic crisis threatens to disrupt the balance of power in favor of the international. Should we threaten the French with war? So will Switzerland stand alone? I mean, our forces are already on the border ready to go, so... I'm not super concerned. But we could be if we needed to be. Actually, you know, I'm going to throw, probably throw in field hospitals. Field hospitals are pretty good overall. And, uh, yeah, that would be really nice. You guys are doing okay. You no longer need it right there. Um, you guys have three divisions, which are fine. I need you guys to be on this Osteval. That would be great. As I'm going to actually split you guys in half. Because we're going to need this. Ah, <sighs> for the future. Paulus, that's fine. There you go. Gotta show you command power. Governor France backs down. Our diplomatic message was received by Paris and quickly seized all diplomatic and undercover activities aimed at against the territorial integrity of Switzerland. We've achieved diplomatic victory today and have shown the world we do want we will stand up to socialist and cynical aggression and we will protect any nation under threat from these revolutionaries. Diplomacy has been achieved once again. Or achieved peace, at least. Future investments of Poland. I would like to do an early mob though. But it looks like we need more investments in here. That'd be nice. Switzerland seeks protection. A diplomatic envoy arrived today from Switzerland with a missive explaining that the current government of Switzerland has found a need to join our military alliance. How should respond? Absolutely. But I think we'll end it there today. We're doing quite well. We finally got rid of the economic crisis or the you know the effects of the Black Monday crash. We got rid of the revolutionaries so far in our nation. So we're doing very well. We caught up and finally by episode three, and it's mid 1937 and no longer 1936. Thank God. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we see what else we can do in both Spain, Bulgaria, and of course, Germany proper. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.